Good morning. Welcome to Willow Hill this morning. Our watchword for the week comes from uh, Philippians 121. For to, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, we do welcome you. And uh, thank you for being here. A uh, few announcements real quick. Choir practice. No choir practice this afternoon, no choir practice next Sunday, and the reason that we're not having choir practice next Sunday is it is our homecoming service and we'll be having a meal that follows. Uh, so be thinking about what you would like to, to bring and share with folks, and, uh, and we're just going to have a good time and have a good time in fellowship and uh, look forward to, uh, to having our homecoming Sunday, and that is next Sunday. October the 1st, so continue to remember, uh, remember that in your prayers. Also, uh, coming up this week is the craft workshop at 7 o'clock on Thursday night, and that'll be every Thursday night between now and the bazaar time. And then the Christmas bazaar announcement uh, is they're gonna, we're going to be doing barbecue uh, sandwich bags for the bazaar meal. And... Uh, also, one thing that I hadn't mentioned, it has just been made official this week, uh, and I don't, I don't remember the guy's real name, but Barney Five is actually going to be here and walking around in his, in his uniform and everything. Uh, the guy that, that portrays Barney Five down here at Mayberry Days and stuff, he's going to come, I think it's from one to four, and he's going to be signing pictures if anybody wants to take pictures with him or what have you. Uh, have heard that, that he's going to be here this uh, for our Christmas Bazaar on November the 11th. All right. I think that's the most pressing ones that we have at the moment. Uh, handbell practice. Do think about handbell practice. It is coming up uh, starting on Sunday, October the 8th. So two weeks from today, it'll start. All right. I think that's our announcements. So if you would this morning, if you would, let's all stand together and turn your, in your Moravian hymnal to hymn number 489. Let's sing together, Christian Hearts in Love United, hymn number 489. Christian hearts in love united, seek alone in Jesus' rest. Has He not your love excited, then let love inspire each breast. Members on your head.
love them this morning. Glad to worship with them. And as you're being seated, if we could get a couple of ushers to come, we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings and be blessed by the choir. Father, we are blessed to be in your house, blessed to be able to give back. God, may we be obedient to you, faithful, true, and just. Heavenly Father, as we serve, as we love, and as we honor what you have done for us, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. <coughs> now, this morning, while you are seated, if you will uh, turn to hymn number 353 again in your Moravian hymnal, we will sing together. Hymn number 353, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Sorry, I was having trouble reading and finding
And boy, I do love my Jesus this morning. God has been good to us. He has blessed us. If you would, if you'll turn over to Genesis chapter 22 and keep your finger there and then go to uh, James chapter 2. Sorry, about left me. Uh, Genesis chapter 22 and then James chapter number 2. I've got to make sure I've marked the right place because now I'm questioning myself. Yeah, James chapter 2. I apologize for that. I marked it, but I didn't stick my papers up like I normally do, so I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find it fast. This morning we're going to talk about Abraham and Isaac and Isaac uh, being offered as a sacrifice unto the Lord. You know, there's a lot of things in this walk of life that uh, doesn't seem feasible, it doesn't seem possible, it doesn't, uh, well, it just goes against what we believe today, right? Right? I don't think that there is a parent in this building this morning that would ever want to have to go what Ab through what Abraham went through. When God called him and told him, he said, I need you to offer up Isaac, your son. He needs to give his life so that I know that you're going to be true to me, that I know that you trust me. I don't think that there's a one of us in here that wouldn't be starting to say, uh, Lord, I love you and I'll do anything else but that I'm not doing. I would. Even as much as I pick and joke and carry on about my kids and, and how much that uh, they seem to do that makes me aggravated and mad and frustrated and everything else, I would not want to have to give up one of my young'uns for everybody else. It's just the way it is, right? I know that you... Ain't nobody shaking their head this morning. Everybody's like, no, I ain't going to say nothing this morning. I'm keeping my head down. It's okay. It's okay. But we're going to read in the Scriptures, the inspired Word of God, where God asked this to test him, to try him just a little bit. And Abraham held true, and we're going to find out why he held true. In chapter 22, verse number 1 of Genesis, it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Verse number 2, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, uh, eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder in worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told them, uh, told him of and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and he said here am I 
And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him, for, offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, I cry out to you this morning. God, we have read this story of Abraham and Isaac. We see the obedience, the faith. We see the things that is happening. And Heavenly Father, I, I pray that God, that you would strengthen us. That God, we would be strong enough in you to be obedient until death. That we would follow after you unto death. That we would try to glorify you unto death. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. Hide us behind the cross. Glorify. Let us not speak anything out of your will today. And it's in Jesus' name we can ask and pray these things. Amen. As we look at this passage of Scripture and, and we know, I, when we get over to James in chapter 2, it just kind of recounts this in a, in a briefer, uh, a fewer verses. And we're going to re. re we're going to go to that here in just a little bit. But I want us to understand that Abraham was tempted here. And Abraham was tempted. Abraham had already been told, hey, leave the place, leave your family, leave the place where you're staying and leave your family, and I need you to go. Pack up your stuff and go. Your wife, your family. He said, okay. I don't know as I'd be willing to do that, much less what he's tempted to do here. We know that he was tempted to do that. We know that, uh, that when the angels came before Isaac was born, he told the angels, he said, how can we have children when we're old? But yet, at an old age, they were given a son, and his name was Isaac. Abraham was known, and we... We call him Abraham. He was the friend of God, right? That's what, the, what we were told, what we're taught. He is the friend of God. But yet here is God that says, Abraham? Abraham says, here I am. He said, I want you to take your son and I want you to sacrifice him unto me. I want you to take your son and I want you to sacrifice him unto me. I want to make sure that you are faithful in what I have told you to do. This son that I give you after life, should, or there shouldn't have been no chance that you would have a son. I want you to take that only son that you have and I want you to sacrifice him on an altar. And I want you to do that so that I know that you're true to me. Some people say, well, that's not a loving God. We see the gift of the love after this. He needs to see the obedience and the faith. He needs to see the faith. It is by faith that we confess our sins. We've got to have faith before salvation can come. It is by faith and belief in our heart that God is going to deliver us out of our sins and into eternal life. Abraham was given a, a, an example right here. And he was given this example for you and I that even in the Old Testament, even in the very beginning book of the Bible that we can see something that relates to us in our salvation today. We have, have to have faith in believing that God can deliver us from our sins before salvation can come. Abraham, he said, take your son, 
that son, thy only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I'm going to show you. What did Abraham do? By faith and obedience, the next morning when it was light, he got up, he saddled his mule, he saddled his donkey, and he left. Now, wouldn't that be hard to explain? Wouldn't that be hard to say? I can honestly, I don't know what Amy King would say to me if I went to her this afternoon and said, listen, God has told me to take Noah about three days' journey away, and he's not coming back. Because I'm going to sacrifice him there. That's what God told me to do. I guarantee you, when I got up out of the hospital, <laughs> that she'd have something to say to me. Because after I said those words, I wouldn't hear or see nothing for a few days. Imagine what this was like. Just for a minute. How hard it must have been. But in his faith and his obedience, he got up the next morning, he says, and he rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. He gathered the wood together. He bundled it up for the burnt offering. He rose up and went into the place of God, uh, went unto the place of which God had told him. He started traveling. He started traveling to Moriah where he knew he needed to be. And he, he, had, he had went in and he had said, Our son has got to be offered up. Think about the, the faith that had to be given. And I want you to notice that it is faith. And why, well, why do you keep saying it is faith and, and obedience? Well, number one, it was obedience. Number two, his faith kicked in. Because when they were there, when Abraham looked upon the place in verse number 4, he told the young men, he said, you, you wait here with a donkey or with the ass, and the lad and I will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. He had faith that God would not make him sacrifice his son. He said, because he told these guys, he said, we're going to go up on that mountain and we're going to worship. He told him to go up there and offer his son as a burnt offering. He said, we're going to go and we're going to worship. You know one of the best ways that we can worship today? Folks, for you and for me, for those of us who have had the faith and we have cried out and we have believed in our heart and we have been obedient under the fact that God can save us, Jesus' blood can cleanse our sins and make us whole and that we are a part of the family of God, one of the things that we need to do today is those things that are hindering and binding us, we need to put them on a burnt offering and we need to offer them up to God and say, here they are. And if I burn them up, if God, if they're slayed, if we draw uh, every drop of blood out of them and we burn them up I can't pick it up and go no more with it oh if we want to get into a true worship he knew that there was going to be a worship on this mountain but he had done told these folks these two little boys or whoever well, young boys let's say go with young boys because that's what he said he said me and the lad is going to worship and we will come back he had faith he had faith. I don't know as I've got that much faith today, but that's what he told them. He even goes on, and we know that uh, he took the wood. I can't think about, I, I think about this without Isaac. He's carrying his own wood that he's supposed to be burned up with. His daddy bundles it up and straps it to his back and says, carry this up that hill, boy. Maybe he ain't... In, Canaanese, but he said that nonetheless. He made him carry it up. And Isaac spoke to him and said, we've got everything for the offering but the sacrifice. What was Abraham's promise? Abraham's word? God will provide. When we're in times of deep despair, when we're in times of struggle, God will provide. We've just got to stay true to him. Abraham stayed true. Isaac never wavered. Never does it tell us in this passage of Scripture, even when it says that Isaac was bound upon this altar, it never says that Isaac spoke a word. 
Now, did he? If he's like my youngins, yes, he did. If he was like me when he was a youngin or an adult, yes, he said something. But we don't know what he said. But obedience and of respect to his Father and to the Heavenly Father, he went and he was on that offering. He said, my God, in verse number 8, my son, my God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. But when Abraham stretched forth his hand, a voice from heaven said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, I see how faithful and true you are. I see how faithful and true you are. I've seen your obedience. I've seen your faith. I know that you're willing to give up everything for me. Let thy son go. Lay not thy hand upon the lad. Don't do anything to him. For I know that thou fearest God, seeing that you have not withheld thy son, thine only son. And we know that there was a lamb called in, or a ram caught in the thicket, right? And we know that that ram, that was the sacrifice. That was the time. That was the sacrifice of what God had provided. And they called the place Jehovah Jireh, which means God our provider. Uh, to this day, if you look with me over in James chapter 2, in verse 21... It says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? By works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and as he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I read that to tell you and to say this. We've got to be obedient. We've got to be faithful to God. Whenever he asks us to do something, we've got to be obedient. We've got to be faithful if we want to see good things happen. Through that, through the sacrifice, through him putting Isaac upon this altar, through Abraham drawing his knife back as his son was laying there, could you imagine the, the pain that was going through his body? And he was willing to do all of that through that obedience is a type of salvation. That's what Jesus done for us. He went to the cross and it was for the joy that was set before him that he endured it for you and for me. Instead of Isaac taking that knife across the throat, spilling his blood and being burned up, God said, hold on, don't lay your hand on him. But I'll show you, I'll send my son for you. He said, you will be the father of many nations. As a matter of fact, he told him that it'd be like the sand of the sea, the sand on the seashore. But he said, you're going to need a sacrificial lamb, and I'm going to send my son. And he's going to be perfect, he's going to be blameless, and he's going to die Every bit of his blood is going to be spilt. And he's going to do it for the joy that was set before him. Abraham was obedient. He had faith. And God delivered salvation because of that obedience and that faith. He delivered salvation. We are delivered salvation through Jesus Christ today. There is no other way. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. And that is Jesus speaking. But the scripture was fulfilled 
In verse 23, it said, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. It was imputed unto him for righteousness because he was obedient, because he had faith, because he stood true to what God had asked him to do. And I beg you today to look around, to look in the mirror, Because when I look in the mirror, I fall short of what God's glory is. I do. I strive to do better. But I fall short. In falling short, hallelujah, that there is the one that I can cry out to and get forgiveness of my shortcomings. I can repent of those shortcomings and I can draw a little closer. I can see a little brighter. I can see a little better. I can do a little more. Why? Because it was imputed to him for righteousness when he done the right things. When he was obedient. When he was living in his faith. It was imputed to him. Imputed uh, that is the act. And this is Schofield's definition, is the act of God whereby he accounts righteousness to the believer in Christ who was born the believer who has, who has born, sorry, the believer's sins in vindication of the law. We are delivered from the law. There is people today that wants to live under the law. They want to live under the law that was given. We don't have to live under the law. We live under grace. Grace was given by a heavenly father that loves us enough to know that we cannot follow the law. We were given one command, right? To love each other. To love our enemies as ourselves. But love is the biggest one, and we have a hard time with that, don't we? Because somebody's made us mad. Somebody's done this to me, and somebody's done that to me, and we get our feelings hurt, and our lip pokes out and starts dragging the ground, slobber starts dripping off of it because we want to feel boo-hoo for us. But God said, you don't have to do that. I want you to love that person that just hurt you. I want you to love that person. It's not easy. I'm not trying to stand up here and tell you I'm doing it. I'm trying to tell you that I'm doing my best at it. I fall short. We all do. That's the reason we need each other. That's the reason we need church on Sunday morning. That's the reason we need Bible studies on Wednesday night. That's the reason that we need Bible studies on Sunday morning is to get together and encourage one another to lift up your head. It is okay. We're not going to be perfect in this walk of life, but let's go along together. Let's go hand in hand, arm in arm. And when God says, hey, I need you to cut this part off, and if you cut this part off, we don't understand sometimes that if we cut this part off, Sometimes we get better, right? Uh Uh-oh. But we don't want to lose part of what we already got. But sometimes things have to be severed. You can never get too far from the shore. You can never go out to sea if you're tied to the docks. We can never do what God wants us to as long as we're tied to this world. We've got to leave this world behind. Don't you know that Isaac was Abraham's world at that point? We know that God was. I ain't trying to take that away. But in this life, Isaac was his world. And yet he was willing to sacrifice him. He said, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. You are not saved by your works. It does not say that. It does not say that at all. It says we are justified. We show our belief by our works. And if we don't have any works, then we're not showing any faith. If we're not showing any faith, we're not showing any love. If we're not showing any love, then we're not doing what Christ told us to do, are we? We're being disobedient in that realm as well. We've got to show love. We've got to show faith. And if we have faith in Jesus, if we have faith in God, we are going to show by our works. What are our works? What is my works? I love to stand here on Sunday morning. This is one of the best times of my week. 
And I think it's because I stay to an extent more prayed up. I tell God every, every morning, God, I'm going to give you this day. Help me, strengthen me, encourage me. But on Sunday mornings, I get up praying most of the time, praying, God, help me to do the right things. Help me, strengthen me not to be bound by anything other than your word. And it ain't a binding, it's a glorifying, it's a magnifying. The attitude in which we, we go into things helps a whole lot. Sunday mornings I do things a little differently. Monday morning I wake up and I'm like, oh, Lord strengthen me this day. Oh. But I so look forward to coming to the church house. God, bind anything up that is hindering me from worshiping. Allow me not to speak anything. And I don't, I don't say to him on the weekdays, make me not say anything that's not, a, not pleasing to thee. And I catch myself saying some stuff that's pleasing to Kenny, but not pleasing to anything else. Definitely not pleasing to my God. He said he was called a friend of God and he was justified not only by his faith but by his willingness to act upon his faith. Are you willing to act upon your faith? Faith, God is absolutely give everything for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. He loves you. And he wants to see the best in you. Are we giving him our best? Are we doing our best? Can we stand upon faith as we get ready this morning to sing hymn number 354? Okay, that is right. <laughs> I thought I'd done looked at the wrong one again. Uh, but as we get ready to sing hymn number 354, Be Thou My Vision, do you truly mean it this morning? Do you truly mean, God, I want you to be my vision. I want you to be my sight. I want you to be my everything. If we do, let's strengthen together and let's put our faith into action by loving those that's around us and severing those things that are hindering. Would you stand and let's sing 354, Be Thou My Vision.
May the God of love, may the God of peace, may the God of your faith and your compassion, oh, shine his light on you and through you and be blessed as you go this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.